Hi, welcome to Teen Pride Book Talk. My name is Lucy and this is the program on AADL TV where each episode I take a few moments to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA community. And the book that I am going to be talking about today is called Man of War and is by Corey McCarthy. This book centers around a main character named River McIntyre who lives in a small town in Ohio. It's a very conservative town called Haley, Ohio, and it is infamous for a marine park, a failing marine park that is in this town called Sea Planet. River is a competitive swimmer. We learned this at the beginning of the book. They live with their two parents and their older brother. They are Lebanese on their mother's side and they begin the book in a relationship with a girlfriend named Taylor and the beginning of the book River refers to themselves as a lesbian but as we soon learn getting into the story River doesn't necessarily have the language to describe what they are feeling or who they think they might be they don't have the words to provide them with the kind of self-examination that they need to do the book starts with a field trip to Sea Planet, and at this field trip, River dives into the shark tank. And this is sort of indicative of their state of mind at this point. Like, this is a better option than to live with what I have going on inside me. We soon learn that some of what River is struggling with is gender dysphoria, internalized homophobia that's very strong. and. The person who helps get them out of the shark tank is a person from their past named Indigo Waits. Indigo Waits is an out agender person who is comfortable being out, is proud of being out. And in this small conservative town, that's pretty unusual. One of the things that this book really stresses, and one of the things that I really liked about this book is how important language is and how language can be key to helping you express what's inside you. If you can name something, it might be easier to identify it. So River begins the book in this relationship with Taylor. Taylor is an extremely binary lesbian. Taylor doesn't believe that people can be bisexual. She is transphobic. She calls herself a feminist, but she's very vocal about how she feels about non-binary people, bisexual people, trans people. And this is the messaging essentially that River has received at this point in their life. Any messaging River really got about being queer or queer life has come from Taylor. And so this is something that they've sort of internalized. River's mother is finally comfortable with River being in this relationship with Taylor. That's something that she has accepted. River starts to realize how much of a struggle gender dysphoria is and how much of this homophobia they've received from their family, from the community, and even from their girlfriend, and they've internalized it and turned it against themselves. And so they start to begin this journey towards realizing that they're maybe non-binary. And the world of competitive swimming is a really interesting place to put a character like River. Corey McCarthy, the author, is a trans man, and he was a swimmer. And I read in an interview that he was talking about how in sports and swimming in particular, issues around gender dysphoria can be so complicated and so difficult. And in this character, Corey McCarthy has created someone who can experience and explore these complex relationships that trans athletes can have with their body. As River starts to learn more about the queer world at large and starts to broaden their language and the scope of what they know, and they start to realize that they are trans. So this swimming piece from the beginning of the book, you can see where River is experiencing this difficult relationship with their body as far as putting a bathing suit on, changing into a suit, getting in the water. And then Corey McCarthy has also created this half Lebanese character, this Arab American character. Corey McCarthy himself is half Lebanese. And that in this small town in Ohio also raises discussions about biracial identity. So there is a lot that River faces, this white cisgender, town that they live in, they almost have never realized that they've been up against. They've sort of accepted it, but as the dive into the shark tank shows us, 
they are also in a place of deep pain and they're miserable and it's gotten to a breaking point and it's gotten to a point where they can no longer exist the way that they've been existing. It's River's mother who is Lebanese and River's mother really struggles with this new exploration of identity that River's going on. At the same time, River's older brother comes out as ace and so their mother experiences this as a failing and as something being wrong not only with her children but as something being wrong with her as a person and as a mother and then she also takes it personally almost as if it's something that they are doing to her and this is really hard for both River and their brother they do have each other and they kind of are able to navigate that together and also talk to their mother together but River's relationship with their mother in this book shows how in a family these relationships can be so fraught and even though their mother had accepted one stage of queerness she wasn't allowed to open her mind to anything else beyond that so you can see that the messaging that river has received from family and from relationships and, and friends and the town really start to feel stifling and sea planet plays a big part in this book this failing marine park and river is really interested in sea life specifically man of war and so sea life is used really well throughout the book as metaphors for gender dysphoria for feeling stifled by your family expectations for loneliness for self-destructive behavior in the wrong environment and these interludes are are so beautiful the whole book is really beautifully written but throughout the chapters, there are these little pages where there'll be a sea animal and then there'll be an explanation about it, but it really relates to the experience that River's going through. For example, there's one about seahorses, there's one about penguins, there's one about octopuses, there's one about blackfish. I'm gonna read this one to you. Killer whales are dolphins. They live in generational families and have different cultures based on specific hunting behaviors and genetic distinctions just like humans. They're polyamorous, extremely maternal, and go through menopause. Orcas are also one of three animal species on this planet to have a spindle cell, apes and humans being the other two. A spindle cell allows the orca to feel deep emotions. They can fall in love and die from depression and they know joy. And then the other one that's particularly apt, especially given the title of the book, Man of War. By nature, Man of Wars are gorgeous masculine fellows. They're also known as blue bottles because of their jeweled translucent sail. They reproduce however they want with whomever they want. Sometimes they do it all by themselves. They can submerge to avoid predators or capture large marine life with their retractable tentacles. By nurture, they are too often socialized female to the point of venomousness. Captivity will kill them as they're meant to exist upon a natural tide, not bound to antiquated commercial gender roles. Approach with affirmation and love. That's the last passage on sea life in this book and it just so beautifully describes an experience that River's been going through but also an experience that River wants. And that passage shows us all the many different ways that man of war can exist. They are, in fact, sort of a colony of beings, not just one single thing. And that multifaceted way to exist is really part of River's exploration. And what this book so brilliantly shows is that exploration and the process of coming out is not always simple or straightforward. River's journey in this book, River's journey to figuring out who they are, and this book goes from high school to college, and then the very end, it takes place a little bit later. And so you can see where River's ended up, and you realize that this journey has taken years. And throughout that, they try on different labels. They experience acceptance in those places and in those spaces and labels. They experience rejection from peers who are also queer and they eventually go through a medical transition and they experience the gender euphoria that can come along with that but also the trials and difficulties that come along with that and i would say that this 
transition, reverse transition is really the plot in a way of this book. Transition in and of itself is not the plot of this book, but rivers specific transition is the plot of this book. And the sea life that is highlighted in this book defies all the binary stifling structures that we as humans put on ourselves and that are put upon us. River is by no means a perfect character. You are experiencing their story and you get behind them, but you see them lash out at everyone. Sometimes people who are being kind to them, sometimes people who are trying to help them. And this is something they have to sort of realize as well on this self-exploration and they have to try and make amends for. Their relationship with Indy experiences very much these highs and lows based a lot in part on River's behavior in this way. And something that River did a long time ago when they were young and they had a whole different set of rules placed on them that they were following. So much of this lashing out and anger comes from this place of internalized homophobia and internalized shame. And while that part of this book is painful and difficult and sad, there are also funny parts in this book. These are high school kids and they're funny. There's a lot of really other great characters in the book, other folks in high school with River, a woman who works at Sea Planet where River eventually works named Mrs. Chang and she is a standout character. She is so supportive but honest with River and really makes River do some deep internal reflecting and really makes River ask some hard questions. In addition to the passages that I read you, this book is, as I said before, just really beautiful. It's very thoughtful. It's very honest. River is a real character. Indian River's relationship is real. It doesn't follow any straight path from getting to know each other towards friendship and happiness. And then it's just beautifully placed in this world of this failing sea planet. And the failing part is important because what you start to realize is that one of the biggest components of sea planet is keeping these sea creatures in captivity. And what happens when you put animals and beings in the wrong environment and you remove them from the social structures that they're supposed to be in, or you remove them from contact and you make them captive. I read an interview with Corey McCarthy on a website called Geeks Out, and I wanna read this quote that he said about his book. Man of War is about cultural captivity. The hero, River McIntyre, is an Irish Arab American like me who has been required to perform femininity and whiteness for the sake of other people's comfort. We meet them at the tender age of 15 when they encounter a happy, healthy queer person and begin the long process of releasing themselves. The book follows River into their college years and throughout gender affirmation surgery, which was a joy to write about for a teen audience. And I wanted to read that because I think the piece about cultural captivity is so interesting. And this Shark Tank right from the beginning is very much a symbol of captivity, but also Corey McCarthy's intention in, in writing the book and having River go through that journey and how important a book like this can be for a teen audience or for any audience, because so much of this book is about having the right support and the right words to, as Corey McCarthy says, release yourself. This book is so emotionally engaging. You really kind of go through the highs and lows with River. And I hope that you read it. This is a really standout story. That's Man of War by Corey McCarthy. Thank you for joining me.